How do guitar players gravitate toward Paul Reed Smith? They play guitar. <laughs> they play guitar. And once they start learning about electric guitars, you discover Paul Reed Smith. That's sweet. It's simple as that. It's the greatest electric guitar. I'm, I can testify to it. I'm holding one right here. And I've been holding one for a long time. You're in a band of geniuses. Yeah, they're marvelous. No, I mean, it's been like that for 50 years. Every time they sit down, it's a thrill. Yeah. I'm standing on the side of the stage hearing things that I have never heard musicians do in my life. got to see sound check with you guys the drummer's ridiculous the percussion's ridiculous the singer sings like a male angel and the violinist is doing things i've never heard before no, they're, they're and they're all... and they're doing your compositions and there's all this unison melody stuff going on the meter was ridiculous <laughs> no. and there's nothing that looks like a bass drum but it sounds better than a bass drum there's all this yeah. stuff going on is yeah. extraordinary there are two fields where Indian music and jazz coincide, share common ground, and that's in the in the unison playing. Like this, there's some diabolical unison playing. This is like is some deep bebop. Yeah. And the improvisation. The masters of improvisation. And that's that's the heart of both cultures, isn't it? It's they joyful are. for you, I I imagine. I think this is the singular characteristic of Shakti. The joy of playing, the Thank joy you. of being together. Band's 50th anniversary, but Zakir and I we go back 54 years, yeah. and we've been playing together since '72, so that's 51 years. The first time I played with Zakir, I was with CBS in '72. They invited me to do a charity show with other artists from CBS, and I could choose the beneficiaries, and I chose the Ali Akbar Khan School of Music. In California, where Zaki was the teacher, because we'd become really good friends mm -hmm. by that time. And that was in LA. And he never heard the band before. I was with the Mahavishnu Orchestra. 
and we played at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in LA, and he came down from Northern California, and the next day, he invited me to go up Northern California to meet Ali Akbar Khan Sahib. <clears throat> just wanted to thank me, and I was very happy to meet him, one of the greatest Indian musicians of all time. Mm -hmm. So I get there, and we had dinner, and uh, Ali Akbar Khan Sahib, he sat down, and he was drinking his whiskey and having a cigarette, and Zakia had his tablets, and I had an acoustic guitar, and they said, hey, why don't we play, <laughs> you know. He got his tablets out, I, I took my acoustic guitar out, and we sat in front of him, he was in his own chair like that, we sat here right in front of him, just the two of us and played. At maximum 30 seconds of playing, I knew I had to work and play with, with this guy, right. with Zakia, yeah. because from the first second, it was total communication, absolutely out of this world. And so it took uh, another year or so to get it together, but finally in 73, I was a, a student of Dr. Ramanathan, studying Vena, South Indian Vena, at Wesleyan College in Connecticut. And his percussion player, who was also a teacher there, introduced me to his nephew, El Shankar, the violinist. We became very good friends, marvelous player, and I said, I have to get this together. Zaki was in California, and I asked Maguru, can I borrow your percussion player <laughs> for it? For, uh, because I wanted South Indian percussion and North Indian, which is we still have today. In 73, that was the, the first concert. My teacher said, yeah, you, you can take him, take him and have fun, you know. And so we played these little concerts. But from the very first concert, this thing that started with Zakir and I, just the two of us in 72, was the joyful spirit of just playing and, and the, the experience of liberation, really, when you have that kind of communication. That characteristic of what I say is a thrill, it's a joy. It sounds joyful. Every time. It every sounds time. very joyful to me. It is. It is. So amazing. I have a story about this. Okay. This is the amplifier you used at the Jeff Beck tribute concert in England. That's the one. And we couldn't get it back. And I we know, finally, I know, and, we, I know, and we got I it back. And, and John, it's a, I know. it's a wonderful sounding amp. And, it's and a I saw the film. Great. You, you enjoyed yourself with, with Rhonda playing bass. It looked oh, like. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's great. Well, I mean, can so I the, borrow it again? You can have it. Oh, it's a great amp. Do you know when we met? Do you know the story? My. Principal memory, I would say, I'm sure you've got one before, but uh, for me, my real meeting with you and seeing you and knowing you as a person yeah. was in Frankfurt. Okay, that was... At, yeah. at the Messe, where I really uh, got a chance to speak to you and get yeah. to know you. Yeah. That was the beginning of Your it, there's instruments. no question. There was a day where you came off the stage with Paco and Al, and I met you and I showed you the prototype for our company. And you sat about this far from me and you had just done a bunch of acoustic guitar playing and you played something on the electric guitar and you were yeah, about this far from me and I couldn't breathe. I had what Joseph Campbell calls a static arrest I, 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 because I had never heard anybody play like that. You <laughs> said to me at the time, one day, one day maybe you'll be good enough to make a guitar, we'll see. And every five years from then on, you called me and said, one day, call my account. One day, do this. One day, do that. And then the Frankfurt thing happened about 30 years later. Finally, can yeah. I get an order? And you ordered it. And I made three guitars. And the third one was the one you finally have. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beauty. Yeah. It's, it's on the cover of, uh, of the, the DVD box set, right. if you remember. The, the thing is, what, what you speak about, like... Because I spent about 10 years playing exclusively acoustic guitar. That's right. So, um, but I knew that at some point it, I would definitely come back to electric guitar. But that whole era, even with Mahavishnu Orchestra, I was playing an acoustic guitar. 
I really started in earnest from 75 with Shakti. Yeah. That was only a good And I was with the, that was the special Shakti guitar. When Viku, the other percussion player, had to go back to India because his father passed away and he had to take care of the, the school, the academy they had over there. 78 was the year I ran into Paco and that was another very powerful meeting. Yeah. From that point, so 70 and I think all the way through to 88, I must have met you then in that period yeah, because that period. I had in my mind, you know, I'm playing acoustic guitar. That's all I'm playing. I'm not playing electric guitar, but, but at some point I will be playing electric guitar. It was the fall of, the late fall of 84. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, a, that yeah. was, that was late a while fall. ago. So when did you decide to play electric in Shakti? It was the period I was playing exclusively the nylon string guitar. A friend of a friend uh, was studying Indian music and he asked me, can I borrow your Shakti guitar? And he said, sure, it needs to be played. I <laughs> am a great believer in guitars need to be played. I think all instruments need to be played. Otherwise, they, they get ill. They need love and attention and they need to be played. Right. Which is why I've given a lot of guitars away in my life. Yeah. Simply because how many guitars can you play in a week? So he had it and you know, and I'm busy touring, I mean with especially with the guitar trio, we were all over the world. Finally in ninety seven I called him up, I said, uh, you know, I'm gonna need the guitar. And he said, Oh uh, oh Oh no. I said, Well well can you bring it back to me? He brought it back. I mean, it was it was beyond repair. Where's the guitar now? I gave it to somebody to hang on their wall. Why don't you give it to me? I'll get it fixed. <laughs> but no, it, it would be hard to get it up back now. Uh, take the screws out of the wall. And we'll fix yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I love doing that. One time, Susan, who's married to Derek Trucks, gave me all the early guitars that were his when he was a kid and we fixed them all and she gave them back to him for for Christmas all working really yeah it was a fun oh, I nice. enjoy taking getting instruments like that to work I thought the sound of this mixed it, with Shakti it, sounded gorgeous it's unbelievable look at look at it look at it and the sound the feel do you know this wood is what they use for marimbas in Guatemala yeah yeah it's it's marimba wood it's beautiful it, yeah it, it is beautiful are you okay that it's not finished and the finish is in the wood, not on top of the wood? Do you like the way it feels? I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, and I've actually started wearing out the, the finish on the prototype because I've been playing it a lot. Good. Oh, yeah, a lot. And already when I got the prototype, it was like a leap forward. And then the second prototype came and that was another leap forward. And then finally, when the 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 first master yeah. arrived what surprised me was it was another leap forward and i didn't think that would be possible awesome. do you know what you said the first time you pulled the guitar out of the case in frankfurt after that three-year decision do you know what you said when you pulled it out no you had it over your shoulder in a bag you didn't want to play it until I was there. You went and found me. I was at the Meepa Awards. Oh, yeah? And you were standing there, and the great guitar player from Texas, David Grissom, was standing there, and he's like, oh, my God, because you're his hero. And you're standing <laughs> in front of him, and you said, I've got the guitar. I said, have you played it? And you said, no. I said, well, and you pulled it out of the case, and you sat down, and you went, oh, shit, I love it. <laughs> Which I thought was a perfect See? comment. why guitar players end up <laughs> discovering PRS. That's sweet. An instrument is so personal. And when you find an instrument that becomes part of your body as a musician, then you're home. But that instrument has got to become, it takes time, takes work with everything. But at a certain point, certain instruments, they become part of your body. And so when you go to play, you're one unit. You're not like somebody playing an instrument. The instrument's playing you, music's playing both of you. You are united. Where music, you, and the instrument become one with the people around you. And sometimes it even happens where 
you get a collective inspiration in the band. At that point, the audience get it. But to do that, you've got to have no problems with your instrument, no problems with yourself, and great players around you. And at the moment, that's what we've got. But the guitar, Paul Reed Smith. So, A, I'm testifying here. What's wrong with that? The way we say it is a really good guitar is like an old t-shirt. You put it on, you forgot you had it on. Okay. It's the same same kind of thing where it's comfortable. You, it, It's something that... You, that part of your body. Part of your body. Yeah. And, and, it be, and you think the music and it comes out of your amp mm. and you're not thinking guitar, right? It's not in the way. This guitar, I wanted it to become part of me instantly. I've been, I've, I mean, I think I've been wearing the fretstone already. It sounds like it looks amazing. Yay. Look at that wood. The finish and the... the everything about it and look at this and that and the neck and the wood but the sound the sound it's killer and the thing that i like about the instrument is no matter how fast you play you can hear that every single note is distinct no, it's unbelievable that, that's the part i really really like yeah i'm not sure the world really understood what we were up to when we released the instrument but now that they're receiving them people are losing their noodles over them. So it's really good, John. We've been advertising forever that these are coil cancel switches. I know. But, but you and I decided to make them EQ switches. Oh. And they're very usable. Oh. Are you switching back and forth all night or just leaving it in one position? No, no, no. For, uh, for arpeggios, it's, I, like, I like to move. And this, too. Yeah. The, combination of, you know, the combination of the different pickups, whether it's two, front, or back alone, with this EQ, as for me personally, when it's a question of arpeggios, I want like this bell, like ping, the clear sound, you know, like bells coming across the countryside. And yeah, which is different, quite different from a solo sound. Yeah. A solo sound, but I'm, I'm old school, you know, I'm old jazz school, so I use the front pickup. But for our arpeggios and chords, yeah, that's, no, but the, EQ's you know, beautiful. I mean, the, the possibilities are, I wouldn't say endless, but they're oh, there's a lot. great. I'm going to end up putting two of those switches in my guitar. You don't have them yet? The EQ switches? No, they're only in your guitars. You, you're the first. Oh, what an <laughs> honor. Thanks for being on. <laughs> Seriously. That'll be $500, Paul. That's all that'll <laughs> cost me? <laughs> this... What you've given me is, does not have a price. Paul. Give me a hug, John. God bless you, Paul. Well done. Mm. Thanks for being on.
Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up.